Okay, hey guys, um, welcome to the Django Meet. Okay, so sorry for the delay that happened now. Uh, just going on ahead. Uh, today we'll be having a lot of interesting talks. We'll be having one of the you know select related and prefetch related, which Indrajit is going to tell about. Then uh, we have more like uh, you know application deployment uh, uni uh, using Ansible, and uh, later we'll be having introduction to meta classes. Then there'll be another open discussions on. Uh, optimization of queries. Okay, this one of the really important talks. I, is that that is one talk where you guys have to you know uh, interact a lot. Okay, which you think is the tips and tricks regarding the optimization of Django? Like you should not hit the database all the time when you make a query, right? It should be more optimized. You should use select related, prefetch related kind of stuff. So those are the things we'll be having an open discussion about in the end. So uh, starting with Indrajit here, who will be talking about demystifying selected, related, select related, and prefetch related. So over to you. Hey guys, uh, my name is Indrajit. I am from Springboard, as uh, as displayed. And uh, so yeah, we'll be looking at uh, select related and prefetch related, and uh, something uh, very interesting phenomenon called the n plus one problem, right? So as uh, it goes on the internet, we'll also be discussing cats and cats who are wearing hats, basically. So let's see what the problem is about. Let's say I have a model cat. Right, the cat has a name, a type, breed, baby, and it's wearing a hat. And there are different kinds of hats, so there's a separate model there, right? So now I want to basically do something very simple. I want to print the cat type and the type of hat it's wearing. So I would basically do something along the lines of this. If I were to write, simply. so I do a Django lookup on the query set, get all the Loop over it, print cat dot name, print cat dot hat dot name, and of course, point to note is hat is a foreign key to the hat model here, right? So I am going to print these two things. Fairly straightforward. It's not. So query right here is going to do the obvious thing. It's going to start cat. That's your database. That's the SQL that's going to execute. But then here is the tricky bit. So when you come to cat dot hat, Django is going to realize, hey, I need the hat object now. So let me go look at the DB, right? So it's going to do that for all n cat objects that you're going to look up. Hence the term n plus one problem. So essentially, you're you should have had one query, right? But you'll end up you'll end up having n more. Queries. N is the number of cats in your database. So uh, that's the premise. Let's see what we can do. So I have not necessarily a database of cats, but a database of books. Uh, these are books that are banned across the world for various reasons. So I'm using this uh, really cool uh, toolbar called the Django Debug Toolbar. I'm sure all of you are familiar with it. So that will help us look at the SQL queries that get executed when I'm rendering this page. And it's going to take a while because I have uh, basically around 4,000 different books in DB and I'm basically, oh let me just show you the models first. So this is what I have. So this is our main model here. We have a list of banned books. Uh, this is pulled from Wikipedia. So you have the book's name, genre which is a foreign key to the genre model up top. Uh, a list of authors, this is a many to many relationship. Uh, year of ban and the banned reason. Uh, so this is the book model. I'll just show you the author model. The simple, just the name of the author, right? So I'm basically rendering this view. You have the name of the book, the genre, the band year, and the band reason. Now you would expect this page to load quickly, right? But let's look at the queries that went into this. Uh, so you see, there were some 2,350 odd queries executed. So this just shows you a really bad case of the problem where I have basically one select start from band book here. Okay. So I have one select star here and then for each each genre I encounter, I do a database hit, right? So this is happening once for every book genre that I have to pull from DB. This is extremely wasteful, but just for illustration, it's done this way. Okay, so so 
So this is the view that's rendering it. So basically, I'm just setting the context of book dot objects dot all. So now we know that hey, there are only a bunch of genres available, right? So it kind of makes sense to do one select query from table, right? What would you you would want to ideally fetch them once and you know set the attribute maybe? So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. So simple. Uh, get the, all the genres in one one select. So that's one database query. Uh, I'm just putting it in a dict for a quick lookup. Uh, getting all the books, iterating over them, and just setting the attribute using the ID. And of course, when you access the ID, you don't necessarily make the call. It just gives you the primary key, the foreign key relationship value there. So this basically saves us a whole lot of queries. So let's have a look at what the result is. Uh, and yeah, quick thing to point out: this took like 520 milliseconds to execute. That was a lot quicker. I didn't have to show that. So again, we're down from 2,000 odd queries to three, right? So you have a select star from just first line of our view. So that got executed. You have a select star from band book here, right? And we're doing that attribute setting in, in our Python code. This works well enough, but it kind of involves you to take care of this, right? So you have to get all the related objects, take the foreign key, follow the relationship, fetch it, set it. If you were to do it like a, in a simple SQL join, that will be great, right? So what you'd have to do is basically join the book table with the genre table. There's a clear relationship there. And that kind of means just one query. So Django allows you to do that. And that is essentially what select related does. So let me just give you a look of the uh, feel of that. So I don't need any of this. That's it. So I just say objects dot all dot select related on the uh, foreign key reference. Right? So this one should technically be even quicker because there would only be one query executed, but there's a join, which is quite evident there. So we can have a look at exactly the data that's getting joined. So you have both tables joined here in SQL, which works fine, which works great, but it only works for foreign keys uh, when you follow them forward and one-to-one -one relationships. So I'll just go back to the slide. So yeah, select related follows foreign key relationships and uh, works on foreign key and one-to-one uh, one -to -one reference. So if you have one-to-one -one field, it works there. It results in a single query being executed. There is a downside to that. If you're, uh, so we'll discuss essentially it, it results in a single more complex query, if you will, right? But then we have more complex models as well. So as we just saw, Authors. Authors is not a foreign key. Authors is many to many fields, right? You can have a book authored by a bunch of people. You can have a bunch of books that are single author authors, right? So how do you do this? What if I want to basically print a list of authors for each book in the same view? So let me... Okay, so let's do the worst possible thing, right? So let's just do books.objects.all. Let's access all the related objects in the template. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, this is going to take a while. This is going to take a long while because not only are we doing all those 2,500 queries for genres, we're doing a bunch more for authors, right? So this is going to be an insanely, like, insane strain on the DB at minimum. Any guesses on what the execution time will be? Okay, you know the answer now. So yeah, that took like 600 milliseconds. You do not want to be taking 600 milliseconds on server. So let's have a look at all the SQL that executed. <coughs> so the first one is going to be just a select star from books. Simple enough, straightforward. Oh, even this page is taking long to load. Okay. So yeah, you have select star. Uh, let me scroll back. Okay, so the first line is expected select star. 
the second one is going to happen for each id so this is what you have to note here so it's doing a join for the id 128 and then it's doing a select for the particular books genre and this these two are going to be repeated for each book in your database right so this is going to be a long list to say the least and the query size double so there's like 4700 queries that went through now so remember we did that set attribute thing uh, so this is a many to many field Django is like boss if I do a simple join here or rather non simple join you are going to have one hell of a big query set one huge uh, result set from your database bad idea right so you have many to many both ways that is going to result in an n cross n join you don't want that so Django basically says I will do exactly what you did probably do it a lot better than my code so that is prefetch related so we need all the genres once all the authors once we can figure out what goes where based on the pks right so that is what this gives you and of course i am also doing a select related genre here if i skip that part it would do the first 2500 query hit yet again so now this query is going to uh, basically do this it will do a join with the genre table initially so you'll have all the books and genres picked up in one sql query it will do a select star on authors so it will pick up all the authors and then it will do a joining basically put these together in python so instead of this being done at an sql level and you getting a huge result set we're doing it at a python level so there's advantages to this as well uh, let's talk about that in a bit so let's see how much this improves our uh, result response time okay so fair amount right 22 milliseconds from 500 we were at yeah good improvement i could say so yeah so this does your typical join that we were expecting joins the book with the authors this does a select star right and of course it does it only for the ids that are in the books that we are looking at which makes sense why select all authors if only 10 of them are being used in the books that I have so that's prefetch related I'll quickly go back to slides okay so prefetch related let look up for each relation uh, typically it's joined in Python so that weaving together happens in Python it also works on your foreign to foreign key and one to one relations but there are very specific scenarios where you would use them generally you would probably want to use select related that's the faster query there are very specific scenarios i believe where a prefetch makes sense to do even on uh, straightforward one to one fields there's also it basically the flexibility is it works on one to many and many, uh, reverse foreign key associations and many to many fields as well so that's the advantage it gives you starting django 1.7 you can go even further with this so right now when we did a prefetch related or even a select related basically a prefetch related we couldn't say anything about do anything about filters we couldn't do anything about you know ordering all that was kind of not possible initially so now we can do that right so let's have a look at the response first yeah give me one side okay so the bible authors and this is from wikipedia so i don't know why it says jewish and christian but basically jewish christian not in alphabetical order uh, we can fix that uh, so there's this prefetch object in django 1.7 onwards that allows you to supply the query set that python will do that joining together with right so if the supply query set is ordered this result would would still be ordered so if i say hey uh, do a prefetch on this and it will say prefetch this is the relationship authors and use this query set so the query set right now is default ordered by name so this should basically change the ordering there right let's see bible okay so there we have it right so your ordering has changed you can also do filtering so let's say for some reason i only want to show books written by people whose name starts with r because my name starts with r right good enough reason i think 
we can do that okay so now i only show the authors if their name starts with r if not basically i haven't given an object to python to do that joining thing to be null so yeah only authors starting r work and yeah these are all single names that's two two word name and his name so the rest are all null there so basically this gives you a whole lot of flexibility in the query set that you are passing you can pass it so django uh, has a really good example with pizzas and toppings so you can even uh, do so here i am passing authors right in this prefetch this you can change around and that's possible on the object dot whatever value you have there so the example they have is pizza dot veg toppings and the toppings are only filtered right so they have a toppings model they filter only the veg and pass it as a query set and you can do toppings dot veg toppings on your pizza so really useful stuff there oh and yeah uh, just to clarify this is still the same uh, quick query that we executed so this is the same uh, join for uh, genres and of course here is where your uh, name like gets executed right and in the previous example you would have seen a order by here so the query set that you have uh, filtered ordered or done uh, some kind of manipulation with is used by python to do that final join let's see okay so when do you use select and do you use prefetch most often like i said you would just use select uh, typically if you have a foreign key you are referencing the forward way or if you have a one to one field if you have a uh, many to many field or if you want to do a reverse look up on your foreign key you would use prefetch related uh i read on a blog interestingly that there are some special cases and even the django documentation mentions this where prefetch kind of makes sense right so if you have uh basically a huge list of books let's say genres are going to be limited right so you're going to have maybe a thousand genres but you can have 100 million books in your database you do a select related there you're basically asking one asking for one huge join there which is uh, like a 10000 on one side and like a 1000 on the other there are scenarios when and uh, again this is only if the models are complicated enough you have to do your profiling but there are scenarios where you would want to do a prefetch there because you're basically only loading thousand objects of genres into memory as opposed to loading a million of them essentially if you look at it, look about it if you think about it from the book perspective so that is one scenario where even for forward foreign key forward and one to one fields you would want to use prefetch but again do your profiling run it check it and then uh you know so i think that's about it that was a quick intro to select and prefetch uh and end of it all it's a xkcd comic on everything boils down to cats thank you